Meantime, the official Kremlin website is currently down. The office of Russian President Vladimir Putin's site went offline following reports of cyber attacks on other Russian government and state media websites. Joining us now for more is cybersecurity expert Claudio Popa. Claudio, first of all, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, I want to get your take on what we're seeing here. Uh, first, Ukraine puts out the call to those underground hackers to say, hey, we need your help. And now we're seeing cyber attacks on Kremlin and state media websites. What's your take on what is happening and where these hacks may be coming from? Thanks for having me on the show. I think it's a fantastically interesting situation that we're living through this is this is unprecedented we've never seen this kind of scrutiny take place during a a, a military conflict a political conflict um, every level of government is watching this across the world we've seen governments issue advisories to their local businesses we've seen countries lend cyber security assistance to ukraine uh, in particular, six European countries have sent uh, experts to Ukraine uh, for the purpose of defending themselves. Now we're seeing that there are calls for um, uh, for people with particular sets of skills to to help um, hack back, as it's called. So that kind of strike back capability uh, is something that that we have not seen before in this type of conflict. We've never seen a public call to say, you know what, we're under attack. Can you help us organize uh, a defense and a, a potentially an offense against our aggressors? So this is a very interesting situation um, for researchers like myself, as well as for governments and, uh, and even for social media companies and uh, social media networks. How long does it take to figure out uh, where hacks, where cyber attacks are coming from and then planning so that you can plot your course and figure out as a country what you're going to do as a defensive move? How long does that take? Because uh, there have there's been uh, there have been several attacks in Ukraine. Uh, there, they were faced with a denial of service attack earlier on last week. Uh, apparently there was a wiper cyber attack that was launched against Ukrainian websites as well. What can you tell us about that? Well, I can tell you that uh, it's, it's a very interesting situation. First of all, uh, the types of denial of service attacks that flood websites like the Kremlin's website, like many Ukrainian websites and, and systems, uh, those are the uh, the most disruptive types of things you can do. You're essentially taking down systems. Uh, in some cases, it's you're only taking down a brochure website, right? So it's it's a symbolic uh, attack. In other cases, you're you could be taking down systems that are controlling ballistic missiles. So there's a, a grave risk there because those systems constantly monitor themselves to see if they're online, and they might take steps to to raise their own vigilance level so so there's a, a there's a significant risk there but it's beyond that now now we're talking about introducing new malicious software that ostensibly looks for particular systems to infect and to disrupt and to control um, and and so the for me one of the most uh, fascinating aspects of this conflict has been the the implication that over the past months um, there's been an effort towards building in back doors into existing Ukrainian businesses as well as those of other countries uh, surrounding Ukraine uh, to have this ability to strike and to coordinate cyber strikes with military strikes. And that uh, is the kind of threat that other countries are feeling as well. They're saying, well, you know what? We knew there would be sanctions. We knew that there would be retaliation uh, for those sanctions. And now countries are saying, well, what's the chance that we also might have a critical infrastructure risk in place um, that is posed by these back doors within systems that have been surreptitiously installed over months and now 
when could they be exploited and what type of surprise are we in for? So uh, that's the type of stuff that, that Canadian uh, government agencies are, um, are certainly watching for. And, and I can see that there are other countries that are putting out advisories along those same lines. It's a fascinating and at the same time very concerning conversation. Uh, thank sure you is. so much. We do have to leave it there for the interest of time, but we thank you for yours. My pleasure. Claudio Popa, cybersecurity expert, joining us.